analyze how to analyze how to analyze your married life from astrology oh it's a very long topic big topic <laughs> 99% of the people who watch astrology videos they think they will determine their married life just by three planets which are those three planets they will see their venus they will see the planet in the seventh they will see the seventh lord that's it case is dis dismissed <laughs> they will do this they will say oh my venus is bad seventh lord is good so it's like average you know average tick tock hai chal jayega oh but there's a malefic in my seventh but that makes it more negative you know two bad versus one positive so it's minus one actually okay Oh, my seventh lord is well placed. Uh, seventh house has a good planet, but my Venus is debility. Again, two minus one is plus one, so it's still okayish, okay. But that's not how we analyze marriage. Of course, that is how you analyze marriage, but that is not the complete picture. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we are going to discuss today. And if you're new to Exotic Astrology, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video after watching it till the end, please hit the thumbs up because it helps the algorithm uh, spread this word to those who need it. And for consultations regarding your marriage, relationships or career, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you irrespective of how your married life will be all right so what is the first parameter that you should use to judge your married life the first thing is for both men and women is venus venus is the karaka for love romance beauty sexuality romance uh, conjugal bliss you know uh, intimacy <clears throat> attraction affection and all this okay so that is the first thing then you need to check your moon moon is Emotions, well, nobody analyzes the moon, right? People just see Venus, they don't see the moon, okay? Now, once you see the moon, you need to check the seventh house. Number three, seventh house means the planet in the seventh or the planets in the seventh. And if there are no planets or even if there are planets, you need to see the seventh lord, okay? So, the seventh house is very essential because... The seventh house is the field of married life, okay? So, any graha there has power to impact your marriage, okay? So, for example, if the tenth lord is in the seventh, then uh, there is something related to profession, okay? So, when you are getting married, you may have a displacement in your job or you may get a new job or you may lose your job or something like that can happen if the dignity is bad. And apart from that, the fourth thing that you need to see is the trines, okay? The fifth house and the ninth house. So, the fifth house and the ninth house are the houses which deal with morality, commitment, and your principles and your values and your, your desires. <laughs> so, they will tell you what kind of a spouse you may desire or what kind of what's your idea of marriage you know what is your idea of commitment what is your idea of having children what's your idea of uh, doing spiritual practices together okay so do not miss these uh, two houses this is the fourth parameter okay the fifth and the ninth very 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 important then the next planet that you need to analyze is jupiter why jupiter is the fifth planet Okay, fifth parameter actually, because Jupiter is the overall suit of your marriage, which is children. As the Vedic scriptures say, put, uh, putra hinam griham shunyam. Okay, a house without children is like griham shunyam, is like no house. It's like two bachelors living together, right? <clears throat> so therefore, if Jupiter is well placed in your chart, even if you have a bad marriage, like if there is problem with your compatibility, you know, you have low physical, sexual, emotional, intellectual, financial compatibility, but still you may do spiritual practices together and you may have a very good marriage. Okay. <clears throat> so therefore, please do not ignore Jupiter. And 
even even if Jupiter is well, uh, I mean, and also if Jupiter is well placed, you may have good children in your life, and that can kind of uh, drift your focus away from the negative things in your relationship. Okay. Then the next parameter that you need to check is the Navamsha's first house. What is the Navamsha telling you? Very, very, very important. The Navamsha's first house gives you a lot of clue about what is the most important thing in your marriage. Okay, so for example, if Mercury is in the first house of your Navamsha, it could be that for you, not not just not for your spouse, but for you, uh, money is very important in marriage. Now, money doesn't mean you want a millionaire spouse, but it means you know, you like to keep a track of expenses in your marriage. Where 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 is my money going? You know, is it getting spent in the right way or not? Okay, so the Navamsha's first house will tell you what are things which are non-negotiable for you in the marriage okay now once you have seen this is the sixth parameter and then the seventh parameter is you need to check venus in the navamsha chart because venus in the navamsha chart is like the atma karaka for the navamsha okay that that will actually tell you what what is the inner bonding that you will experience with your spouse now if venus is well placed in your navamsha but badly placed in the d1 there could be differences externally okay there could be separation because of external reasons and all this okay so venus is very 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 important in the navamsha and the last factor eighth factor which is very important in the navamsha is the ninth lord of your navamsha the ninth law, Lord of your Navamsha will tell you how will you maintain your marriage when there are difficulties. Okay, very, very, very important. This is always ignored. The ninth Lord of the D9. <clears throat> so, if you have a good ninth Lord of your D9, then irrespective of whatever differences, difficulties you have, you have a tenden higher tendency to maintain your married life. Else, maybe not. Okay, maybe you want to but you still don't want <laughs> all right so if you use these eight factors and the most important factor above all this is your dasha so what kind of mahadasha antar dasha are you running so if you have good mahadashas good antar dashas then it's really a blessing so <clears throat> if the second house, seventh house, eleventh house, these are houses that support marriage. If these houses have good planets and they they are coming in your dashas, so if your second lord's mahadasha is coming and suppose you are Gemini Lagna and your Venus Mahadasha is coming and oops, Venus is your second lord, but Venus Dasha is very long, right? Twenty years. So <clears throat> that can be a uh, favorable for you, okay? But nonetheless, favorable dashas and favorable transits, these are like, this is, this is most, most, most important. This is something which people ignore. And at the end, you have to remember, marriage is all about spiritual growth. So, the ultimate determining factor of your marriage is not just all these factors that I mentioned, but... <coughs> It's your commitment and your uh, elevation uh, towards God and spirituality. Otherwise, uh, marriage will become a very dull and very dry, a very boring thing within some days or some months you know, or at least in five years. <clears throat> because then you will not have any more happiness in your married life. Okay, It, it will just be like a thing which you are dragging on. You know, it's like... You are, uh, how do I say this? You are, you are just there. <laughs> and then you're like, oh yeah, externally people are telling you, oh, this couple is so nice, you know, they look so good together and blah, blah, blah. They are saying all this, but internally you are like, oh, I'm done with this marriage. <laughs> Irrespective of the fact, how's your 
internal life how's your relationship with your children in laws apart from all this after 3 to 5 years if you do not elevate your consciousness both the husband and the wife then there's not much that remains in marriage okay it becomes like another thing in your life it just does not solve the purpose okay you will be there together as a couple uh, externally but you know there's nothing else <laughs> all right so use these 10 or maybe 11 or 12 factors to judge your married life rather than just seeing your venus seventh lord and the seventh house all right thank you so much if you're new then please like the video and yes subscribe and for consultations my website is down below god is there with you all the time he will save you from all these place wings <laughs> okay thank you so much